All right, everybody, you're not going to see a whole lot different here, I don't think. I tend to forget what I put on my previous videos. Uh, but I can say exciting news today. I took the Jimmy 2 out on its maiden voyage with myself and my wife and my four kids. So a lot of us were in there. I don't even have oars for it yet. I just had some canoe paddles. So it was very short lived. I just wanted to see how it behaved in the water. Make sure I had no leaks, which I did not have any. Well, actually I did have one very small leak, which I'll tell you about in a second. And it did awesome. Uh, you will see here, I guess one change. I had to figure out how to get it on top of the car. So this is kind of the first phase of the trip to the car is just to get it, get it there. I built this little trailer. Uh, it's got a, one of those removable clips so I can take the wheel off and it stores better in the back of our Suburban. And that thing works great. I basically line it up right with the bulkhead more or less and it's balanced very nicely. And I haven't dinged the front or the back keel at all as far as I know on the road. So I just got to pay attention. I don't do that and life will be good. Uh, I do have my fire extinguisher in there, even though I haven't put the gas motor on. Uh, I wasn't sure what I would need for my inspection. So I had to get it to the car to get it on top, to bring it down to a Colorado Parks and Wildlife office to be inspected so I could get a whole number for it, which would then allow me to get a registration for it, which would then allow me to either sail or use my motor. There's no res registration required, obviously, if you're just rowing it. But so that's all we did today. But um, I guess there is kind of more to cover here than I thought. This little contraption here is the rack for the top of our Suburban. So I will, I'll try and explain how I do this. If you are curious, you can YouTube it. And there's lots of guys with John boats that are flipping them upside down and pulling them up on top of their trucks. And that's exactly what I ended up doing. I initially started to do my own system and it just was not going well. So I went back to what I saw on YouTube and there you go, it worked perfect. So I have, let's see. So that rack right there is on top. The two by fours and two by sixes is on top of our Suburban. Typically I drilled holes through our luggage rack and those studs slip through. And then I just have a nut on the other side that I tighten down with the wrench. And I do have a electric winch, 2000 pound winch, was which was the smallest one I could find. Got that at Harbor Freight for obvious reasons. <laughs> and got some carpet there to protect the boat it does scratch it just a little bit which i'm disappointed in but i think uh other than that i'm really happy with how this works so i'll try and explain this really quick i have a few lines here two of them actually that's just one but two of my lines are a fixed length they hook on to the cleats on the back of the boat, on the stern. So these guys here, two of them. So this is really tough to show you in my garage with this rack vertical. Sorry for the uh, headache there. So this is the rear of the rack. So once the end of those lines goes on each corner, so obviously that's gonna be horizontal. So one goes down there, one goes up there. They clip onto each cleat. That allows the boat to hang basically above the road at a safe distance. Uh, on the back of the Suburban. So the boat, picture the Suburban facing one way, the boat right side up facing 180 degrees the other way with the boat basically hanging off the back of the Suburban rack on those two cleats. Then I take this, which I haven't made a pre-measured out splice line for yet, but this mess of rope here clips on the front. There it is, I just tied it on and it's looped off. And this loop 
comes around each side of the bow there. So that forms a loop. This hooks onto the winch. So if you can imagine, the winch takes the bow of the boat, pulls it straight up as the stern is pivoting on those lines in the back, and it just pulls the boat vertically. Uh, there's a point where it just, I can easily help it onto the back of the rack, and then the boat's light enough, I can just lift it up. So I pivot it. I try to help it out as much as I can so nothing breaks with the winch, but it just pulls it right up onto the rack. And then once the winch is maxed out, I can push it up the rest of the way. And that's no big deal. So I do have the winch toward the rear, running to a pulley on the front of it, and then back. That allows me to pull a little bit further than if the winch was mounted on the front, which I ran into issues with that already. So this is kind of second, third, fourth design, I guess, from when I started. So anyway, all that said, the boat ends up upside down on top of the car. Then I just ratchet strap it down with a line in the bow and a line off the stern to my trailer hitch. One additional component, I have a custom welder uh, that made to prevent the boat from slamming into the back of the Suburban. I commissioned um, a welder that I know very highly experienced, has done a lot of welding on vehicles and has done car restorations and all kinds of things. Done it professionally, building furniture. Um, I'll show you what he got here. So he built me this, and I will say that professional welder is my brother. <laughs> so for a case of beer, or I don't know, a little bit of his, his fancy beer that he likes, I got that built for me. This part fits right into the trailer hitch, and the boat rests on there, and I can stand on it, and it's, it's great. It's nice to have a step that doubles as a bumper pad for the back, so the the stern just rests right up against there as it's being pulled up and it works awesome. So enough said on that. I had the inspection done, which basically was just a verification that there was not an existing hole number on it. So I got that done. I got my, my registration done. So I'm waiting for the hole number plates to come. I ordered those online. They're like brass, brass or stainless. I can't remember. So I'll, I'll stick those on the boat and then I got some numbers coming too. Unfortunately, the closest marine store is West Marine, and that's over a half an hour. It's about a half hour away with no traffic. So anything I can do online that's not time critical, I'm doing it that way. So like I said, I got my fire extinguisher on there. I did a test run with my engine to make sure if, uh, if you've been following me, through this build for weight distribution and just space savings. I have my fuel line right here, running through the seat to the back side of the seat here. So I got this all done. Sorry, my lighting's not better. So there's my fuel, uh, I'll call it a fuel receptacle and I was concerned about the length of the run, but I did a test run in my front yard with the motor on the back and the fuel tank up front. It's just a little three gallon tank right there. And it ran great. So I think I should be okay. I was a little worried about that distance, but, and then I, I added some tie down blocks there. I could use a ratchet strap or I bought one of those just cinching straps to hold the fuel tank in place, and then I'm hoping I stuff an anchor up there as well. And my dad graciously offered to get me a uh, chrome or stainless latch. So that's gonna be his boat gift. So it'll match my hinges right there. I don't know. I mentioned this in the previous video being kind of an eyesore, but anyway, it doesn't quite match. I got my hatches there to seal off the seat trunks. I didn't have any leaking 
into the seat trunk from around the center board or the dagger board um, trunk I guess it's called and I'm trying to think what else I'm not sure if this was on here the lower mass step um, that is all done I used some mahogany plugs there to cover up my screw holes what else I think that might be it I got my ore locks in there I just have two of them on so far there's gonna be two more and I still need to make a thwart that spans the center when I'm using it as a rowboat I got my gudgeons mounted there's what it looks like on the inside as well as my drain brass sleeve I got that installed right there and flared and there's the outside of the gudgeons and I also have my pin tools mounted on the rudder cassette right here I got that just I did not use that today probably should have would have been easier to row it with canoe paddles I'm um, being able to steer at the same time with the rudder but anyway that's all ready to go and varnished I have my tiller made now I'm not sure I had that made last time I put a piece of my Sitka spruce from the mast in between two mahogany pieces just for fun there's the hole that's the they call that the drill glue drill I think it's called where you drill a larger hole fill it with epoxy and then drill the smaller hole for the bolt to go through which is also what I did right here on my tiller uh, on my rudder cassette for the tiller bolt to go through there so that just helps with water protection uh, the mast is pretty much done I got some cleats on there for the lines I don't have my sail rail on yet my sail is full size uh, the sewing when I say that I mean I've sewn the full size all the panels are sewn together I still need to do the edging hems and then the grommets so I'll probably do that after I'm done with this video work on that a little bit before I'm done for the night so that's that a little work to do there one thing I was kind of disappointed in was the where the sail excuse me where the mast fits in to the holes here there was a lot of play and I called sail I called um Chesapeake Lightcraft on that and asked them about it and they said they didn't seem too sure about it but i suggested that it could be for wood movement <laughs> and they kind of said yeah that's that's probably why <laughs> so anyway i made these series of wedges here or shims that i'm going to screw there's a couple holes there i got it all all set on the forward and sides I'm going to just screw those on there and that'll keep it tight and there'll be a level of adjustability, which would be kind of nice if I maybe, instead of having holes here, if I slot those, then I can loosen the screws and adjust my shims as needed. But it's, uh, the mass is pretty, pretty darn vertical with these, uh, installed where I have them designed to be installed. So, uh, that's what I'm going to do for that. I'm not sure if that's correct or not but that's the solution i came up with um i'm not happy with any of my varnishing this one is wet right here it's probably hard to see if i can get some glare it's not terrible but man i'm having a hard time getting a really good varnish um you could smooth varnish coat i have four coats on this right now and i'll probably do more at some point but Right now, I feel like I have the protection I need UV-wise that I'm just going to put everything together and use the boat. And then maybe in the winter off-season, I can try and hone in my varnish skills. But I am not really happy with any of the finish that I have here. <laughs> so, uh, I think that is all. I can't think of anything else to update you guys on next time. I don't know, it'll probably only be a couple more videos and that, that'll probably wrap it all up unless you guys have any specific questions.
again, I'm doing these videos because I haven't seen any other Jimmy 2 assembly videos online. So I figured it'd be helpful because when I was looking for some guidance and just a general idea of what I was getting into before I bought the, the plans, I wasn't coming up with anything. So hopefully this helps and uh, it'd be fun if we had some conversation about it. So there have been a few comments here and there, which I really appreciate. So anyway, I guess that's it. Until next time, take care.